Hello Star Wars fans and welcome to episode 40 of Journey into Legends. Today we are going to be reading X-Wing The Kratos Trap by Michael Stackpole. The Kratos Trap was released in 1996 and it is the third book in the fan favorite X-Wing series of novels. I'm really excited to jump into this next book. I really enjoyed Rogue Squadron and while I didn't really enjoy Wedge's Gamble, I have had a lot of fun with the series as a whole. Anyways, without further ado, let's read and review. Alright, so coming off of the end of last book where Corn Horn was presumed dead and Tycho was arrested for his apparent murder, one of the major plotlines in this book is Tycho's trial. I think I've said this in both of my previous reviews, but I've absolutely loved the story that Stackpole has given Tycho in these books, especially in this book. So anyways, Tycho is being tried for the murder of Korn, as well as being suspected as an Imperial spy. And we have Noara Venn as his attorney, which is just a great use of that character as well. And one aspect of this storyline that I really liked is that the trial is just as political as it is practical. It's highly publicized, and it's being used as a way to show the citizens of the New Republic that there is no pro-human, anti-alien bias, which is a very relevant issue due to the Kratos virus, which I'll talk more about later. Alright, so since his apparent death at the end of the last book, Corrin spends the majority of this book imprisoned by Yassan Isard in her top-secret, inescapable prison, the Lusankia. And this was one of my favorite storylines in the whole book. I really enjoyed Corrin running around the Lusankia, interacting with the other prisoners, including General Dodonna from A New Hope and General Derricote from the previous books. And there was a lot of mystery in this plotline involving the prison itself and what it actually is, which I'll get to later in this video. The only real issue I have with this plotline is after Corrin escapes, he stumbles upon a Jedi museum on Coruscant where he learns a little bit about the Jedi and he learns that his grandfather was a Jedi and he uses a lightsaber for a little bit. Now, of course, I've known about Corrin eventually becoming a Jedi in later EU books, but this part of the book came across as very forced. Corrin is obviously the main character of these books. He's Stackpole's original creation, so it felt very forced and out of nowhere for Corrin to discover his Jedi heritage, and now he's eventually going to go off and become Stackpole's all-powerful Gary Stu, great pilot, great Jedi character. Now, I could be wrong, of course. I haven't read any of these later EU books as of yet, but right now, I just didn't like the way it was done here. Other than that, however, this storyline was a lot of fun. All oh, right, now our titular threat in this book is the Kratos virus that plagues the non-human citizens of the galaxy. Now, of course, this plotline was introduced in the previous book, but actually it didn't get as much focus in this book as I was expecting. Now, there was a lot going on involving the procurement of Bacta to treat the virus, and Kirtan Lore's little side plot was all about him attacking the New Republic's Bacta storage facilities. There was also a side plot about Rogue Squadron traveling to Ryloth to procure some Rill as to create a more effective antidote against the virus. It's always cool to see familiar planets like Ryloth pop back up, but I felt that this little adventure could have happened off screen. Nothing monumental really happened on Ryloth, and it dragged on far longer than it had to. However, I did like how this little side plot connected to the X-Wing comics with some familiar characters. Alright, so my favorite part of this book is basically the entire final act. It all starts when Corrin escapes from the Lusankia and comes back from the dead to make a dramatic entrance into Tycho's trial, where he basically acquits Tycho of all of his charges. This was just such a satisfying way to conclude both of these storylines. But then comes the grand finale, where the Lusankia breaks out of Coruscant's surface and flees from the planet. This was just such a fantastic turn of events and such an epic way to conclude this book. And the reveal that the Lusankia is a super star destroyer that's been hiding under the surface of Coruscant all along was done so well. Another thing to note is that we finally learn the identity of the spy within Rogue Squadron. And just as I predicted, it ended up being none other than Arisi Delaret. Now I saw this coming from a mile or a parsec away, <laughs> get it? But it was still very satisfying to finally tie up this loose end. And speaking of loose ends, Kirtan Lore finally meets his end in this book. 
Just before testifying on behalf of Tycho's innocence, Kyrton is ambushed and shot and killed by an assassin sent by Isard. Now, there's actually a lot more to this scene. Ayala with Ciri is able to kill the assassin, who turns out to be none other than her brainwashed husband, Derek. Just a crazy turn of events. And then the book ends on a really good note. First, I should mention that Luke actually makes an appearance in this book, and he offers to train Corrin as a Jedi. Now, Corrin actually refuses, which I liked, but it was cool seeing Luke nonetheless. But the big twist at the end of this book is that when Rogue Squadron is tasked with going on the hunt for Warlord Zinj, rather than hunting Isard like they wanted to, Rogue Squadron, in its entirety, resigns from the New Republic. This was just a fantastic scene and such a great way to end the book. It makes me really excited for the Back to War. So overall, I did end up enjoying this book quite a bit. My biggest issue is that, except for the very end of the book, there is a distinct lack of memorable moments. Now, I did enjoy the story that this book told as a whole, but it was a bit uneventful until the end. Anyways, I am going to give this book an 84%. I did enjoy it significantly more than Wedge's Gamble, however, I do think that Rogue Squadron is still the best of the series so far. I hope you guys enjoyed the review, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for my next video where I'll be reading the fourth and final book in the X-Wing Rogue Squadron series, The Back to War. See ya.